music is too loud. Okay, let me just let me just turn that down real quick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Okay, let's start that over again. Okay, we're gonna be starting this in three, two, one. Hey everyone, we're gonna be coaching um, Simple Juice here today on his Mammy gameplay. I hope you guys are ready. This is gonna be sick. I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit. This is pretty straightforward watching entrance of your jungle. So normally I would watch this entrance as long as the other entrance is uh, warded or being guarded by another champ, but this is good because the Kha'Zix warded it, so it's all good. Because if they did end up invading, it'd be pretty risky. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yikes. That was, uh, <laughs> that was kind of unlucky, I'd have to say. Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can really do about that one. That guy just straight up chimped out. All you gotta do is pretty much just be as composed as you can. Be like, be like, fuck. I guess, uh, mid later. Into the kill. At least it's to the support. That's not too bad. So I'm just gonna slow it down a little bit here. Nice how you warded this, this is good. At this point, we know that Nautilus has hooks, so you're getting a lot of good damage on. You're taking a lot of creep aggro, so you want to uh, reset that aggro by walking into the brush. That way, you don't take too much free damage. You notice how you're using a pot right here. Um, you actually don't need to use that pot, since you are using W. To sustain yourself up so with Nami you got you get a little bit more leisure to kind of you know trade some HP because the great thing about Nami is the fact that her W is so broken level 1 you can trade and not really take any damage back since it does come back to you and heals you um, you, you, I also noticed that you are taking a good amount of like, um, uh, I mean, you, you are giving a lot of auto attacks. So the second point that I would recommend is actually putting it into your E, which is your slow. Uh, the bubble was nice because you, you got hooked and you were able to return back onto Twitch. But since you are able to... Uh, since you are able to trade back pretty easy, um, as long as you can dodge those those hooks and stuff like that, it should be pretty easy for you to get in your combo of uh, eating yourself and then getting one or two autos in, Wing out for the speed and the heal back in case they do trade on you, and then walking away. Okay, pretty huge wave. You want to try and prep those wa those creeps in the back. Um, let me just grab my epic pen out real quick. Okay, so the wave is crashing, and you have a Gen 80 carry. Even if you don't have a oopsie daisies, even if you didn't have a Gen, one thing that you really need to do as a support is really set up the creeps for your uh, 80 carry. So I'm just gonna get, rewind this. Okay, so you went for a trade, which is fine. You, you got a good chunk, but you gotta get into the habit of you need to hit this creep, you need to hit this creep, and you need to hit this creep. And then once the wave starts autoing the casters, you need to see the health. These two are really low, so They'll actually, you know, take one hit from the turret and then they'll be ready for Jin to pick up. He'll probably just be ready to grenade the whole set of them so you can pick them up pretty easy. But just gonna get into the habit that if your AD is under turret, especially before first base, before any AD that he can set it up himself, 
you want to be the one that'll set up the creeps for him. It just makes his life a lot easier. And that's kind of what you need to do as a support is just kind of make your 80s life easy as much as possible. You know, even if they're a monkey ass 80, you just gotta try your best because you're stuck with that dude for like 30 minutes pretty much. So you're doing a pretty good job, like, not walking too far up without your AD, looking for those W pokes and stuff like that. Um, the best person to poke, obviously, is a Twitch when you can. So it's nice that you recognize that, okay, I need to poke down to Twitch, but he's out of range because he's playing like a total bitch. So it's good that you're not going over aggressive for those trades, especially since you don't know where their jungle is. So that's good map awareness that you got on going on. You can actually just set up onto that Nautilus because he is super far up right now. So if you can take advantage of Nautilus stepping up way too far without the Twitch being able to really to really help him out, you should try and um, do that more often since it, he, he does that a good amount of the lane. Alright, so you notice you have a huge health advantage, whoa. <clears throat> you have a huge health advantage, and I think you guys should stay in lane, even though you guys are kind of oom. You should guys could call Kha'Zix over, and since you guys blew their summoners, this actually opens up the game for a dive bottom. Now I know this is like lower elo and stuff like that, but to get into the habit of Kind of seeing these plays is really good because as you're climbing you'll see these opportunities where you can dive bottom and it's not as risky since you guys did take a trade before where they used pretty much all their summoners they use ignite no nautilus flash only twitch has flash pretty much okay so you opted for two pinks i actually like this this buy um I would actually just go to mid and ward for him. Actually, now that I am looking at the score, never mind, fuck mid. He's he's just hard inting to his laner. <laughs> so it's fine. You're you're warding for your lane. That's actually not bad since you guys are doing pretty well. You guys have summoner advantage. I would actually take advantage of this and look for uh Look for more 2v2s. That was a good flash. Okay. Whoa. What did that guy die from? Okay. Did, that was actually such a risky fight to take. Knock, they, they could have just straight up 4 man you guys. It turned out pretty good though, considering it was like 3v3. You guys traded uh, 1 for 2. So if, you're, if your solo laners aren't doing too hot, this is what you need to do to kind of take control of the game. You guys need to apply your pressure by taking that first tower bottom. That way you can break open the map as fast as you can. <clears throat> so after every base, one thing I would like you to do, especially once you have your sight stone, just try and ward this area right here. I'm just gonna have you guys look at the mini map real quick. So when you're walking from base, you want to walk down mid first. That way you can decide like, okay, if their mid laner is pushing and the jungle is coming, you ping mid and you can either, you know, have a cheeky gank to the left where they totally won't expect you since you're a bot laner. Or you could walk down your jungle 
and get a safe ward right here at the entrance of your jungle. Since it, you don't have any lane pressure, your mid is missing, he's, he's taught without getting pressure. Um, you don't know where that enemy Lux is, you don't know where the Nocturne is, so the safe bet for you is to ward the entrance right there. And then head straight down to bottom. Save your ward, the rest of your wards for bottom. Otherwise, so far not too bad. Definitely could have uh, played a little bit more aggressive in lane. It's actually pretty risky to <laughs> damn that Nautilus just got some straight value out of <laughs> killing your pinks right there. I wouldn't place your pinks down in that uh, tri bush until you had pressure in lane, because you you notice that they're just kind of taking it for free. So I would actually avoid placing those pinks in that area. Also, one technique that you could do to really set up your bubbles is to um, add your E to yourself first, auto them one time, and then set up the bubble that way. Yeah, that was a little un unfortunate. Got hit by the hook. You guys do not win a straight 2v2. You need to be playing off the poke and calling your jungle over when you have the chance. I just want to look back and see if that was avoidable at all. So your posturing is super aggressive. <laughs> you don't have your flash up, you don't have your exhaust up. So it's pretty risky for you to walk up like that, especially since you don't have boots to dodge the hook. Like, it may seem like you're really fast because I have you like sped up and stuff, but actually you are so slow. You are super slow. Yeah, you have 335 base movement speed. Goes up to 407 with the... Uh, with your passive from healing yourself or casting an ability on yourself. But if you're in a situation where you can't get poke off safely, I, I'd say it's just not worth it to trade for the poke straight up if you don't have your summoners up without boots and stuff like that. Yeah, without having exhaust up either, you're just sashimi for that twitch. So at this point in 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 time, laning phase still going on might be ending soon <coughs> so while they're doing dragon it's pretty free for them by the end of the dragon um, you have a full sight stone stack right now so their their jungle is dead the best thing that you can do after you clear this war is to walk is to walk into their jungle and get vision so you walk here, and you ward that, and you maybe get a shallow ward here, and then you piece out the same exact way. Alright, so just look at the minimap real quick. <laughs> you you want to, from where you are right now, after you place that, uh, you clear that pink, you walk in, and you ward this area, and then you maybe ward wolves 
or you can ward like a, a really shallow 